What happened to my brown coat? <laughs>
what is that? Where's Leopard Gecko Records? Oh, really? Yeah. He belongs to every single spot. He's got like a, you should see his ID card. He's got an ID card for it. Yeah. But uh, for our single, I'll send you mine. It'll probably take about, uh, for you, you're here again. I'm going to send I'll that. be back down um, probably in a few weeks, like April 15th. Yeah. I'll have about 10 minutes. So. <coughs> Do they sound in here? Are they still pure platters? I only they have, they ordered like 15 or 20 of them. Like I've heard these bands that they bought them, like World of Food is here, that band, have you heard them? Yeah, I met one of them in Boston last year. They were like fans of us and everything. They bought our single. And pure platters because they couldn't buy it. Yeah, the drummer from the, uh, the bass player from the Gus Nubbles, that guy Mar. Yeah, he, he told me. Oh, he just told me that he's really a pure single. He buys. He's the one that sold the wedding present about it. Right. No, no, no. The other guys in the best levels. Yeah. He did. But this guy, Mark, uh, is the bass player. He just. I saw him today at the Whitney. He was there. Really? Yeah. Like, long hair about this Yeah. Club. I well, saw him there. What was he doing up there? He was looking at postcards and stuff. Why are you there? Because I saw them play with Unrest that night. Oh, really? I recognize him. Yeah. yeah, anyway. Well, no, the guy who uh, the played girl. with Unrest isn't the guy I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about the bass player for Unrest who's blonde hair. Like, the me. bass player for um, Unrest. Right. I'm, no, I'm sorry. Uh, he has blonde Dust hair. Devil. No, bass player for Dust Devils. He has brown hair about this long. Bass player for Unrest does. The bass player from the Dust Devils is who I'm talking about. His name's Mark. He's got blonde hair. Blonde hair. Yeah, you're called. I saw the Dust Devils. Hey, hey. The Dust Devils bass player. I think he was in the Dust Devils bass player. I think, yeah. He had blonde hair, right? No, it was like brown. That's the guitar player, Mike. No, the guitar player had like hair kind of out like this. Like, the girl had blonde, sort of blonde hair. Yeah, she's quite a blonde hair. Well, anyway, what I'm saying is that um, this guy, Mark, who's a bass player of Dust Devils, um, bought several of his. He said he went out to put flowers and got them. So. But I'd like to get one. He said he didn't give him away as presents. <laughs> really? Yeah. Good. Like, people he like, recommends us to them? Yeah. All right. He liked the packaging. He said that's the reason he bought it in the first place. He hadn't even known it. Heard, it, heard anything packaging. about it, but he just All went right. out there and liked the way it looked. Cool. And that's why he bought it initially. So he's a true fan of yours. That's good. <laughs> good people that didn't like read all Well, also, like what's pretty cool, I thought, was that um, or what, there were, I got a surprise because um, I'd heard the seven inch, and then um, David and Bob said, oh, have you heard Pavement from yeah. that guy, Steve? Yeah, I said, yeah. And then, um, and then they played some of it, it sounded really good, and then I taped it you know, a few weeks later from my friend, and then I liked it a lot, and then I read about it in Chemical Imbalance. Yeah, they say they have us in the next issue. Oh, uh, did they interview you for that? They haven't even bothered calling us. Well, anyway, so, they, um, they, um, Anyway, I heard about it, and then I, and then I found out, then I realized when you came back to the yeah. East Coast that I like made the connection, that like I, on my own head, like you without didn't I didn't realize it. Like when I saw you in the sidewalk that day with Bob, yeah. I just didn't even make the connection at that yeah, point. Okay. But then like later you that, me though from before, yeah, I remember you from when we were first year yeah. at yeah. school in the dorms. Yeah. That's what I remember you from. Right. And uh, I just remember. Like Laura was lost a woman right. back then. Yeah. And uh, you used to sit around and play guitar a lot, I think. Yeah. But I could never, 
uh, tell what kind of music you're into. Yeah, we were but then I knew you were a DJ for TJU, but I don't think I ever heard your show. It wasn't much of a show compared to those guys. Yeah. It was two to six in the morning. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's with a friend of mine from Stockholm. He decided to do that. It's not like on Did the you know him from high school? Yeah, he went to high school. And it was just like on a whim we decided to make a record. Like We've only practiced it out like probably 15 times, 20 times in our whole life. And wow. Well, no, we were in a band before, you know. We practiced a lot. In high school. Yeah, like did you go, Did you go out there like every summer? Or? Yeah, like sometimes, you know, on and on. <coughs> when I got back, like we had changed a lot from the band we were in before. He had to play bass and I had to play guitar. What kind of music were you into in high school? Just like punk rock. I was in a punk rock band. What kind of punk rock? Like, like LA hardcore? Yeah, like we have for Black Flag and all those type bands. And then, you know, that was he wasn't even in that band. He what was, was his name? What's his name again? Scott. His name, Spiral Stairs, it says on there. His name's Scott. Did it say Steve in there? Uh, your name? You SM. Remember. SM. What did that say for? That's just my name. Oh, all right. What did, um, <laughs> Slave Track? Slave Track. Slave Track. Well, that was like, I just liked the Slay tracks. And like those dates, they were like on this Jose Jose Luis Borges book I had. Uh -huh. It didn't even matter. Like, it was like his stories, like to a certain day. And then, like, I decided to put, like, to his years that those stories were made. Right. I decided to, like, put those years, like, on ours just for the fun of it. Wow. Slay tracks was like, it was weird because, like, that day they reported that this guy, like, killed all these people. Oh, really? Did you hear about that, that guy, serial killer, James Purdy? Yeah. He killed, like, all these Vietnamese kids in Stockton. Oh, he recorded it. when? Oh, I didn't hear about day, that. When, day. how many kids did he kill? Like, seven. That was, like, in 88? When did it happen? It was in 89, like, January. No shit. I, I heard something about that. So Slay Tracks was just the perfect And it happened to, like, just work out really weird. Mm. So we were already going to call it that. Yeah. No, and then the 19th, the date, what was it, 1933? That was just like these Jose Luis Borges, the left, and other stories I had. And I was like, I just saw those dates, and I just like thought it was... Oh, it was the date of a collection of stories. Yeah, and I just like, just, I decided some years would look, sound neat, kind of just like in a phonetic sort of way. Right. So it was kind of arbitrary, but it made sense. Yeah. That's exactly. That's like what <laughs> I think we do. It's like... Yeah. You know, do you know the, the kind of scientific term for that? Like yeah, about quantum well, physics. Yeah. Have you taught, heard much about quantum no, physics? I, that's what exactly. That like that's a synonym up. for quantum physics. Arbitrary, but it makes sense. Yeah. Exactly what you well, it's like free association. Right. right. Like, um, makes it like I say something free associated, and then like I make a stor weird story out of it. Right. Sort of. Yeah. That's like. It's cool. That it relates. That's what, kind of what we're trying for now. Cool. But we have like. A new one coming out very soon. That's great. Should have uh, already been out. It's from the same session, right? No, it's new. We did it in October of '89, and mm -hmm. then we did some like the first of the year that we have. It's all in '89. We finished it like. All in what? 1989. Everything right. we did. We finished another thing. It was just another single. So we have two singles. Two singles. Like, two. On you know, what label? It's Drag City's name. Who um, else is on that? Real Charles. Real Charles. <laughs> Can you trust those guys? Yeah, I got the seven inch real trucks. That's Neil. Is that Neil from Pussy Galore? Yeah, he's in it. I just found Jennifer that worked at the. Like, uh, listen, listen to this when I was in CBGB's. And, um, Thurston was in there. And that guy, Ned, who used to run CBGB's. Well, I did. I, we were in there talking, and I, I asked Ned if he had pavement. And uh, he said, no. Yeah, he said, no, we still have it. It was pretty good. And then Thurston. Um, no, and then I said, uh, I heard that um, Pavement was coming out, a uh, new 7 inch yeah. on the Royal Trucks label. Yeah. I heard HP Zinker's yeah, coming yeah, out on that label. Game yeah. That's what yeah. I said. Yeah. But they didn't comment on your thing, but they both heard of it. It's an amazing game we're playing, Steve. You'd like it. Which yeah. game? We're playing this game where, like, Basketball. One person names a town in the state, and the other person who catches it has to immediately think of the state and a different town in that state and toss it back. It's like if you go to like Stockton, I have to go to San Francisco. Okay, <laughs> if you go Bangor, I have to go to Portland. What if you miss the If you go Saginaw, I have to go to Gross Point. Does it matter? Just say something funny. And if you go Helen, I have to go, you? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, um, 
David's good. Of course, David. City's in the same state. Wow, he missed. No, no, no. Or city's near it. Here it's tough. Here, no, this is the rule. I don't. You know, it's the, <laughs> the that's that's, states, that's one season. version. This version's even better. Know. You're allowed to name any city, like Boston, yeah. Lincoln. I say Tallahassee. You, just, yeah. you can name any city. You can repeat cities. Okay. But the city that you drop the ball on, like Bob. <laughs> no, no, seriously. What was the city? Salem, you, Morgan. Like Bob goes to Salem, and he threw it to me, and I dropped it on. That city you can never go to. Never get to. You can never go to that city, or bad luck will befall you. That's what works. He just says any city, I say any city. Okay, city. Bad it. luck will befall you if you yeah, say the city that you drop the ball on. No, if you go to that city. Wow, oh, does this yeah, relate to Kenny Gain if you were little, or did you just no, make this up? No, we made it up. You just made this game City up? back and forth, city back and forth. The, the city he wow, says, yeah. if he throws it to me, he says the city. You guys make up games a lot? Well, we did this potato game. Because you have a lot of rules for, like, oh. I mean, the key time. Okay. Nice feed. Nice feed. Nice feed. Nice feed. Oh. Nice feed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice feed. No problem. My pleasure. My pleasure. Crank up the ball. I'm ready. Fuck that bar in your it's in my face. No, it's in my face. <laughs> That's Rich Walker. <coughs> Jeff never had anything but extreme love for you, David. Whenever you heard your name, you like wanted, you know. You know. It's Rich Walker who said that thing about David Burr down on the face. Yeah, yeah, Rich Walker is anti you on occasion. <laughs> on occasion. Who is that? He's Rich Walker. Rich Walker. Tonight, like, like, I got all of them, like, he's really happy to be talking to him. Overall, I love David. Like, I got in front of him, like, hey, yeah. When I met you down inside, that on a person to person, I already irritated him. Because you aren't drunk. Me too. I was getting his face. <laughs> Bob had more face. That's because I had this Spanish exchange student in 11th grade, and then it fucking drove me up the wall. I saved me for six days. What do I have to do with Spanish exchange students? I learned patience with Irritating people like yourself. Yeah, put that on, man. That's the best song of the year. Yeah, that Julius Nip probably you know that cartoon. Which song do you think is the best song of the year? Jawbreaker Busy. <laughs> you know that cartoon? You've never heard of it. Put it on. What is it? Teen <laughs> Punk. Are you being serious or sarcastic? It's probably my, it's probably one, it's, I don't know, it might be my favorite song the whole year. He's I love it so much. At all, right? It's an amazing cartoon. He's serious, but it's so terrible. Do you think it's really not? <laughs> wow. Well, I agree with, I mean, uh, it's funny. I agree with Bob on Yola Tango. I'm a big Yola Tango supporter. But, uh, I'm I was, a I'm, a, I'm a bigger Sonic Heath supporter, so I actually like Sonic Heath. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a bigger guy. Uh, but, but it didn't have anything to do with one being better than the other, you know? They were both, I think, equally amazing. I heard someone going to tell you were bad. Show. That's all there. It could have really sucked. I've only seen him three times, but, um, there's a lot. I do know something, though, yeah. Eric. The Yellow Tango really can suck. Yeah, I've seen a show really there that was a lot worse than this one. I yeah, did. I saw they could be like really good. It's, it's like Charlottesville and they were terrible. I saw them open for the fields, the rips, and they were pretty bad. They were so amazing. They were, like, they were, they were really amazing in Boston. On a roll, maybe. Dude, oh, it's game. funny how on MTV they show like all these hip acts <coughs> and they show the army ad like they're trying to get kids to be hip but the same time they want them to be disciplined and be hip. Hey David man, please put that basketball game what is What are you saying about kids trying to be disciplined and hip? This is pressure? No, MTV, like oh, yeah. the commercials all have a message to the kids. Right, just like, like no music, drugs, like, like work like, hard, go to school. But on the other hand, Spike Lee, Spike Lee and like Motley Crue commercials and like really cool clothes. And right, like and then and the, all the DJs. Like, and then they had an army commercial, like yeah. these guys like in uniforms, be yourself That's in the great. army, and then they'll say be yourself by being weird. Like right. MTV gets two messages. It's great because both yeah. methods, you know, there's both. You can pick either one, yeah. and they show weird. Some things. people pick both. Like they show really people. weird things like this in the middle. Look, yeah, some people. Bob, look at this. this guy Bob, you love this. Bob, look. These two guys look, 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 face. look. Uh, the one guy knocked his head off. That's great. Oh, now he goes and picks his head Bob, you're missing an amazing MTV sketch, man.
Wow, now they're punching each other's. Oh, wow. Man, Two I little can't colored find the jawbreaker single. Well, where's the jawbreaker oh, single, Steve? It? You pulled that out? Oh, so you pulled that out, didn't you? That's a great sculpture. You pulled yeah, that out, didn't you? Such a good sculpture. That's a problem. It's frozen lima beans, man. You Here it is. It. Please, I'm interested in this one. That is beautiful. Weird. Steve, uh, oh, yes! Last record I looked at is the jawbreaker like single. So it's weird. Like, like, it looks like it could be a big block of pistachio, but it's frozen lima beans. That is unreal. Do that. It would get your teeth. Steve first. Art. Steve Art. Art. Look. Art. Are you gonna eat that, Steve? Yeah. Steve Art. Amazing. Steve, you're so scrawny. It makes me sick sometimes. <laughs> Tossing fresh yeah, lima eat. beans. Steve, this is about the Boston Art Robbers. Wait, where's security guards? Quiet. Yeah, Art Robbers. Are you putting on? Shh. That's that. Oh, it's about you. Oh, that big fat. This is relevant to your careers, you guys. Exactly. And the collection was not insured because that would have been too expensive. You guys have an opportunity to maybe like... Wait, wait, we got to know that. Ordinarily, we ought to be able to arrange 100 million coverage for $150,000 a year. Such policies require strict security clearance. 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 The kind of systems the art dealers have long become familiar with. It requires very technical sort of alarm systems. And video cameras, it requires uh, proper security able to use the vaults and safes. Getting museum yes. officials refused to talk about their security, but Detective William Martin of the Los Angeles Police Department's special art theft detail says That'd it's great the art. Uh, Excellent security at the Getting Museum. Uh, I guess not. And, uh, I was yeah, the museum oh, your boss could be here. Uh, Still, Martin admits art thefts are on the rise. Wait, what is that LA Police Art Theft Division? Yeah. Yeah, man, we got art I, I hey, wait, who, who, who takes most of these things, do you think? Like, where are you going to put a fucking Rembrandt, you know, without yeah. somebody noticing? You've stolen it. Where are you going to, you can only ever be able to display it. No, you can only use it to, like, save in some vault of your family treasury, and then, like, 300 years later, it'll be, like, this found stolen painting of Rembrandt, you know, like, yeah, in some in some rich castle. Like, Art is always stolen throughout the years, you know, yeah. and it always like turns up a few hundred years later. That's why the most precious object. Right. Like that's why the most ancient art has survived because it was stolen. Right. Like the people who robbed Tutankhamun too. Right. We should thank them because if they hadn't done that, it might not have been preserved nearly as well. We should thank the Boston we Art Museum. Thank the Boston yeah. Art Museum. It's amazing to judge the You have to use that sweet word we use when your first sentence is first first things first. We should thank the Boston Art Museum. <laughs> On to the next thing. <laughs> it's really true though, because like they're making like an interesting art rediscovery three hundred years from now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Good point, Pirate. <coughs> nice guest order. <laughs> <laughs> guest order. We were doing flyers up here on Rival around Jersey City. Nobody would have come. Now it's been thirty two. Can you imagine we've been a flyer tonight speaking at our house? <laughs> On the authenticity of our collections. They wouldn't even be able to have read it. The word authenticity. Hey, do you think there's other kind of like white yeah. trash uh, oh, sub pop it's artists long. like yourself around here? You know, it, I, I would say to Rob, like, I would say to Rob, this You're is the only place, place, right? the only place in the Tri-State area you can come for a little country. Like, this is, this is the only spot in, in the Tri-State area that is, like, when you walk through the door in this living room, it becomes, like, the only country living room. Like, there's all the trash on the floor, and, like, the sun that comes through there, you can't see anything. Like, You're saying this is the place is its own country? This is, one of the, this is one of the few places in New York where you can sit here in, this, in the afternoon sun and, like, look out the window, and you won't see anything but trees. You can see the sun. There's no building. Only, only if you stand up. If you're right. lying down, you just see a sky and trees. trees. It's the only place. Wow. And, and there's it's always, like, house. there's a country atmosphere in here. It's New York's only country atmosphere. Yeah. I'm sure there's some other people who live, like, off uh, Yeah, but they don't have the country atmosphere. There's some people there. They don't have the country atmosphere. They don't have the country atmosphere. Right. Like, I was just here in Virginia, and this could be looking out a window there, or looking out a window in Washington, D.C., where there are trees in the street. But D.C. is a beautiful city. Yeah. But God, man, I was at D.C. space last night. I think it's going to be right. Man, I was just out of D.C. space. Yeah. Did you see a show last night holding the orange flag? 
And uh, we didn't yeah. we didn't see her because Lee almost got mugged. What? She was freaked out, and so we brought her home. I can understand. And that. She got mugged um, Sunday night on Fifth Street. We lost sixty dollars, but she almost see? got no here in New York. You got mugged? Well, well, where is she from? And then she got mugged. Is she well, from Montana, really? That's she's what they from say. Idaho. My parents live in Idaho. Oh, really? Well, she Catch them, you know where Ketchum is? Sun Valley? Yeah, she, <laughs> she, her parents live in Boise. But I went she's, there just to, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's cool. What are you talking She, um, she was, boring, she, no, it's not. I think it's interesting. She was born in Washington State and, uh, then lived in uh, Washington, Seattle, and then Portland. Uh, she's smaller than that. Uh, uh, I'm falling back tonight. Right, dude, yeah, Bob. Yeah, Bob takes the record, you can see his crap. That's what we're doing. I'm not doing it, and I'm just got some crap. We're all tied to crap. We're all tied to crap. <laughs> Is that the Michigan State fish? He thought he won. Yeah, that's 
Boxer, like yeah. flyweight. He's about five feet tall. He has so much of a face. He walks. Oh my god. He wears his tape. He wears his tape. That's horrible. When he says goodbye at night, when he says goodbye at night, he's like this. He goes like this. Goodbye, David. He's so smart, though. The only thing, funny comment about the outfit. Look, there was eight seconds left when it went in. They wasted four seconds. That guy's the white guy's t- calling it. I'm not sure what he was thinking about there. You've got to call a timeout immediately. Find your coach and let him tell you what do you want. You want timeout? You want me to push it up? That time, Steve Smith didn't look up. You should bring what he needed with you. Huh? Should bring what he needed with you. Yeah, we're thinking about doing something interesting. It's a really cool school to show Are you working smart? Are you working smart? Yeah, two floors of minimalist. Minimalist stuff. Old minimalist sculpture. Post minimalist sculpture. Like who? Any names? Yeah, I really tried to get that thing going. Yeah, but you know, 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 Stoner sculpture from the 70s and 60s. Really weird. It's like, it was really unpopular when it came out. Wow. Really. That's deep. It's really intense. Don't you agree that sculpture shows are incredibly intense? At first, I thought it was really boring. Just like piles of dirt everywhere. It's really good. I love all those. I know. I like everything on those. Bangless, I don't know. Ah, I still like her shit. Just that one. I like that one. I love it all. It's so dry. I love those paper Richard Tuttle ones on the wall. You can barely see them. And the wire ones, yes. I love those. Those, like, canvas ones, I don't care that much. The Bruce Down thing. Bruce Down and Sarah. I know that one, Sulphur Falls. That one, you know. Down and Sarah. Sarah. And Kirk Mann's also on the court. Here we go. Me too. That's what she said. I like that one. She's like, I don't see why. It's cool colors. Yes. Oh. They went for the really long shot. Unbelievable. I like that Robert. Um, that one. How you get the salt line? Yeah, that big pile of salt in here. That was the best one. The one that was like such a good there. game. You down in it, yeah. You can, like you can lose that game and still feel good about yeah. yourself. First, completely good about player, yourself. You yeah. Mirror, really yeah. Window, yeah. Come on, ball. That's a really fucking weird one. It's an amazing yeah. turn. Yeah. It seems yeah. so well yeah. matched. Yeah. You're great. Wow. It's unbelievable. Wow. Georgetown was a loser team. I want to get a little souvenir. I want to get one too. But I'm in the. Xavier's playing here now. Xavier lost. Xavier lost. Xavier lost. Xavier But they were still like a great force in the tournament. Like that would be if you get burned down. So do you think Texas is just like the hot team right now? Play Arkansas, it's just as hot. That's a that's a regional semi final game. That's that's a final eight game, right? Yeah. Is this a big eight game? No, this is Paul State. So so look at this, this is a game, Steve. It's a big eight game. Oh, it's a big eight game. Yeah, the Paul State Paul State is American UNLV from the uh it's a final eight game. No, it's a sweet 16. Go back into your shell. So Texas wins only when they're in the top eight. Final four. Texas has already won. They're in the final eight. Elite eight. This is, a, this is the um, night after. Texas is Texas now. Texas played the first night. This is the second night of the regional semifinal. Wait, Texas is in the final eight now? Yeah. Not in the final four yet? Yeah, final eight. Like the NBA last year. We've got to beat Arkansas to get the final four. They beat Arkansas. Oh, let me check you out. 
Georgia Tech just clutched it out, man. That's so cool. So wait, could Georgia Tech and um, Duke conceivably play each other in the finals, or would they hit in the big four? I don't know. I can't remember the bracket. Get it back. What album is this, Steve? Steve, where is this? <coughs> oh, which one? I've never heard this one. Is this before All Rise? Yeah. I've, 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 this is the only one I haven't heard. This was their first one, right? First one, yeah. Yeah. That was sad. That was like their first one that broke. I can't walk I've got the last three. I've got All Rise, Jetson, and... I like that song, Treason. No, I haven't heard this before. I've never heard it. Wait, Steve, you live here. You can stay right here. Bob, stick here. You can stay right here. Where's the other? Yeah, I can stay here. I can stay here. I can stay here. I can stay here. I can stay State. Something like good for Ball, Ball State. State, Bob. Ball State's doing it. Bob, Ball State. I won. <laughs> Bob, you know, he's driving me out there, and then he walked ahead of me, and I ran, I ran back in and locked the door. And you locked out? Dude. He was right. choking me and threw me out the door, and then he said, Bob, you can't get in. Wow. Dude, what a battle. It's amazing. He just earned his right to stay here. <laughs> Bob, get in here, Bob. Quick. Hey, Bob, get Dave, in here. You have a hard time game. Hey, Bob, Bob, the game. The game. The game, Bob. <laughs> Bob, I won. Bob, I won. Hey, Bob. 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 Two-point game. Bob, stay with the ball. Bob, I won. First final eight ever for Minnesota. This is the best Minnesota has ever done. All right, Minnesota. Yay, Minnesota. <laughs> I've got a friend from Minnesota. She's probably really into it. <coughs> Did you hear that home set going to shit? They're breaking up. I heard Gerard Conway like quit. Yeah, and he just like. Like, he didn't hand over to anybody, and the whole catalog fell apart, and done, yeah. it's pretty close. I mean, it would take a, it would take a miracle for me to say this. Well, those will still exist. I mean, they'll sell those off, but I don't think they're going to... Like, Unless somebody revitalizes it. Yeah, under that other blimpy. Five, two-point game, ball state with the ball. Wow. Bob, what do you think about the uh, demise of Homestead Records? Um, I wrote 
I think it's still yeah. going. Yeah, I mean, that was fair. Stupid pass. What was that? Why'd that guy pass that? Huh. Oh. state show. That ball state guy? Yeah. Why'd that guy break that? Yeah, I'm not doing this guy. Tiger with his shoulder really weird. UNLV really won that? UNLV really won? Yeah. What happened here, Steve? That was a quick 12 seconds. That guy should have shot from the free throw line, man. Okay, chose. Number 22. Gonna be the one to chose. Pull up. Oh, Brad Sean. <coughs> but did they think there was a foul that didn't get called? Time. What happened? Did they think there was a foul that didn't get called? I don't know. What, was, what, what were they arguing about? I don't know. Maybe the foul was down. Steve, Steve, you're like aspiring towards the international rock star scene. I mean, you've got that wedding present deal. So, you see that thing you see here called Black Judas? You see that thing? Bands in it. I told you if they sent us that thing. That would be the best buys to get off the wall because everything was like 50% off. And so, I didn't have that much money. I just wanted well, 50% off. Yeah. And then I was talking to Kim Gordon last week at the Boston show for about a half an hour. And um, I didn't record a conversation with her. She's really nice to talk to. I've met her once before. But um, I was really impressed because it's like she's been painted as very arrogant and like cold. And do you have that sense? Um, you know, like, I don't, I don't think the impression of her has been put forth. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't really know. But just like whatever Steve Albini sings about her is definitely creating some kind of impression, you know. And her, her, her posture on stage is like, kind of like that yeah. tough bitch, you know. But she was really nice to talk to. She's really smart. You know, she's like, she like knows her art history cold. She went to art school and studied visual art for like three years now. Right? I, I and, um, it was an amazing conversation, but... She she was say, she actually this is a quote from her she said uh, yeah Thurston just sits around and listens to jazz music all day but uh, basically he's just into the old black guys and uh, and then she said that uh, yeah he just sits around and reads catalogs about records that he wants to get I, I'd say he's a musicologist he's definitely a musicologist that's what uh, Kim said about Thurston wow. it's pretty cool quote to hear her say it but she would talk see I had like a very like straightforward conversation with her. Like we talked all about uh, the avant-garde, and uh, we talked about um, the idea of postmodernism. We talked about sort of academic art historian kind of subjects, and she was really uh, uh, lucid about these things. And she had a lot of ideas, and her vocabulary was really amazing. And we were able to talk about Roland Barth and Bella Puck and the Dadaists, and I mean shit that I'm like over my head in, but you know, at least know that what it refers to. 
And um, it was a pretty interesting conversation. Steve Healy was there too. We both had a conversation with him. Yeah, you just walked up for. Yeah, we just went up there. Well, I had I had like stayed uh, press passes for my, for my sister who works for that MTV guy. She could call like any major label and get me into any show for free. And so she got me free tickets. Oh, so you're talking to backstage at Boston? Yeah, between, they played an all ages early show and then they played a later show. I talked to him between the two shows. But um, it was interesting to talk. And their new songs here? Their new songs, I think, are great. I think they're fucking amazing. I mean, a friend of mine in DC had heard, um, he saw them live last week play with Fugazi in DC. They, they played together in DC, a benefit show. And he, he felt that like their new songs were kind of predictable. I mean, like, you know, they had, like, certain uh, sort of predictableness or consistency with what they've done in the past. They weren't breaking new ground for themselves, but they were definitely new songs, you know. Some of them had, like, a predictable pop rhythm to it, but there's fucked up sonic youth tunings and distortions and stuff. But, um... Good lyrics. Good lyrics, as far as I could tell. They have one song that's about... Uh, it's called Fuck, well, the real title is Fuck Priest, but they can't use that title, so they call it Mary Christ, and it's uh, about Jesus, about Mary Christ, about, Mary, about the Mother Mary, but they said, this is called Fuck Priest, but that's the, uh, but the corporate, they said the corporate title is Mary Christ. <laughs> um, that was during the show, but then I asked him, I asked, I also asked him about, the, they, the show they did was a benefit for Mass Choice, which is the pro-abortion rights group in Massachusetts. The show that I saw him was a benefit for that. And uh, so I asked Kim, I said, you know, you've got that song Flower, and they sang it in both sets. You know, support the power of women, use the power of man, say the word fuck, um, say the word love. That's basically the lyric. And that, and she dedicated that song to PMRC. <laughs> she said the song's from PMRC before she sang it. And so that, along with the fact that it was a benefit for a social cause, I said, uh, do you consider uh, rock and roll or, or any of your lyrics? Or I, you know, I mentioned those two instances. How is you know, any social commentary going on? She said, well, I wouldn't like to use that word. I'd rather like to consider it social consciousness. That's what she said. <laughs> Pretty good point from her. Yeah. And then I said, well, um, do you consider uh, what you're doing artistic? And she goes, no, it's not art at all. It's just music. <laughs> And I said, and then she said, I don't want this to sound arrogant or anything, but you know, we don't really think about uh, what we're doing or how it fits in with the movements or the picture. We just do it. And I thought I, I felt really sincere when she said it. I mean, I would believe it. I, I, I feel that way about their music. What is this? Is it MTV? Unbelievable. Is that MTV, really? <laughs> Which show is that? Uh, so anyway, um... So Kim was cool. It was a good talk to her. And she said that she thought music was uh, progressive, whereas art, which she talks about, when she says art, she said, I think art means visual art. And she said, I think art, visual art, or the art world is elitist, but that music is more progressive. And then I said, well, what about like LA music? What about like corporate rock? And I said, you know, now you're on a major label. And she goes, well, basically LA is, is like the music as market scene. And she said New York is really um, more fringe. 